Are you a workaholic? Are you married to a workaholic? Do you know a workaholic? Is all of the value and identity wrapped around work? Guess what? There's a reason why that happens. I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to give you the solution how to heal from that. Let's get into this knowledge bomb. I am a man, and that may not be a surprise to you, but what men deal with in this society is more than we really think, right? We're, we're very clear on the burden that women have as women in this world, in a structured society that is very obviously patriarchal in the sense of we are valuing so much masculine energy and uh, it's constructed around masculinity and doing and doing and doing and achieving. And then what we expect from mothers and wives and just being a woman, I know it's very difficult. I do, and I've have I work with a lot of women, so I've, I'm very clear on this. Of course, I'm not a woman, so I don't have that experience. But I do have the experience as a man, and I know the potentiality of the unfolding of what can happen as a man starts coming to a higher self. I also know what happens when a man is stuck in that density, and unfortunately, the majority of men that we see walking the streets at a cafe, in the mall, at a restaurant, are really in that dense state, and. The goal for us as men, and listen, if you have a man in your life, this is the time to click copy, paste, forward, and say, husband, dad, brother, I love you. Listen to this episode, okay? So back to this. So many men are in such a dense state without even knowing it. And we call it being a man. And women and people around us have experiences of this is how men are. This is how we show up in the world. But I wanna highlight something. And it's a term that I haven't seen coined yet, but it just came out of me yesterday when I was doing some content. We were filming yesterday and I said the, uh, the wounded overachieving man or the wounded high achiever. And we think about a few things when I say that. What is a high achieving man, right? The man that in this structured society has achieved. They've gotten all the accolades, right? They, they, they graduated with this. They work at this. They've opened this new company. They've achieved and they've seemingly been successful by society's measure of success, which is really just money and oftentimes fame and oftentimes just high achieving qualities like I run a Fortune 500 business. Now, I've worked with a few really high achieving men. And I want to let you know a few things. And I'm talking about like billionaire level. I want to let you know a few things just because, and this is in this context of this podcast, a man has achieved a certain level of wealth does not mean that they are healthy. Actually, some of the most mentally and emotionally unhealthy people are high achieving men that I've experienced. Now, wh where does that come from? Wait, hold on. Wait, how does, how does that make sense? If they were to realize such success, shouldn't they be in a healthy way? No, because one, our measure of success isn't necessarily healthy. Accumulating resources and money isn't a measure of I'm internally happy. It isn't a measure of I'm emotionally authentic and expressive. On the contrary, a lot of the things that drive that level of success that level of grinding, that level of I need to show up in the world are actually compensations for repressed emotion. And of course, I'm going to go here. How can I not? You ever hear of a workaholic? I have. Ever, that, that term is so readily used, right? Oh, yes, my brother. He's great. The kids love him, but he's such a workaholic. My husband. He's home. He's, he's great on the weekends, but man, he's so wrapped up with work. He's a workaholic, right? How many of you have had the experiences of being at home with dad, but he's kind of never home because he's always working late. And on the weekends, he's always working, addicted to working and doing, imbalanced completely in the masculine feminine polarity, workaholic. Now, it's one thing to work hard. We celebrate that. And it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's valuable to have that reservoir where you can tap into and then begin to show up in this world as I'm going to show up with something that I'm passionate about and work hard and do it. Beautiful. It's another thing to work hard because you're deriving your sense of self and your value from the work that you do or you think you should be doing or on a deeper level, you think makes you the person that everyone would find lovable. 
Now we're going to go deeper. So remember, this is in the context of a high achieving male because the dynamics of the youth and the trauma are going to be in relation to the young boy. But that doesn't mean a woman can't be a high achieving, hyper masculine, wounded woman. We could do another show on that. But really, I want to give a lot of shout out and love to men because we're hurting too. And I'm going to tell you why. So what is the root cause of a wounded, high achieving male? A lot of you may have a man in your life who's wrapped up in work. Their identity, their sense of self is wrapped up around their work. All they think about is work. All they talk about is work. Maybe they're not present in the household. Maybe they're even not present with kids. Or maybe they are in the household, but they're not emotionally connecting. There's a reason behind this. I want you to think about this. Every little boy in this world has an open heart. A lot of you out there may have kids. You might have a boy. You might remember when you were a kid and being around little boys, and you might have been a little boy in your life. But I want you to know this. Every little boy has an open heart. Every little boy cries. Every little boy screams in anger. Every little boy jumps on the couch in full of joy. So what happens to that little boy? Well, what happens is as we get older and we develop our sense of self, that egoic sense of who we think we are, especially around the age of six or seven, we begin acclimating in survival to our household. We sort of know this. But if your father, and this is usually a father wound, if your father celebrates and only gives you love, adoration, attention, when you achieve, oh, you are setting yourself up to be a wounded high achiever. If you only receive that love that should be given, whether or not you're achieving, just because you are you, from achieving, you are setting yourself up to live the rest of your life looking for love through work and achievement. And this is why that compensation of being a workaholic shows up. Because we're not given the love just by naturally being authentically us. And when we do express all the parts of us, it's not found as lovable. But when we achieve, yes, you are finally lovable. And that can come from mom or dad, but usually there's a paternal wound there. So when a young boy starts seeing his value through maybe good grades, maybe through sports and achievement, maybe through getting into the college that they should have gotten into, maybe getting in a high achieving job, maybe starting a business, that's when you get the recognition from your parents, especially your father, you are setting yourself up to be a wounded high achiever. And unfortunately, and this is painful because how many men out there do this. A lot of men derive their sense of self from work, protecting, providing awesome, awesome pieces of the masculine. Again, we get lost and wrapped up in it. So what happens is we become workaholics and we work hard in order to run away from that pain of not being lovable and accepted just for who we are. We work hard. We repress those emotions that we want to express, that sadness of why don't you love me for who I am, that anger of like, you should fucking love me for who I am. And instead we take that energy and we overcompensate, we become workaholics, we study really hard, great, study hard, but we lose ourselves in that study. We work really hard, but we lose ourselves in the work. We think the next achievement, right, the next business we op open, the next million that we make, the next billion that we make, will finally find us lovable by our partners and by the people around us. But ultimately, what we're truly looking for is that love that we've been wanting and yearning from our parents, especially from our father. The majority of wounded, High achieving males out here are just looking for a dad to love and accept them for who they are. Not for their work, not for their achievements, but just for who they are. And for dad to accept who they are in perfection, opening their heart and bringing back that loving part of them. But why does this happen? Why does this happen generationally? I want you to think about this. Imagine a father who's so disconnected from his heart that the only time he opens his heart is when he's vicariously living through his child. And when that child realizes accomplishment, acceptance, adoration, achievement, right? When they're doing all of these things, they're celebrated by society standards, and the father opens his heart and goes, yes, son, you did good. You're great. I love you. That, that once a year, I love you. Maybe that three times a year, I love you. Why does that happen? Well, it's generational. It's the same expression of love from his father. And it's the same expression of love from his father. So I want all the men out here who are listening to this, or all the women who have a man that they love in their lives, I want you to listen to this and listen closely. The way 
to heal yourself from being a wounded high achieving man and just to be a high achieving man is to come back to your heart. You have to, have to balance that masculine and feminine. The majority of wounded high achieving men are in an imbalanced wounded masculine state where they are doing, 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 doing to the point of exhaustion, to the point of where they're so disconnected and numb from their feelings and they've lost who they were through the avenue of work. So what we need to do as men is come back to our hearts. Every single man who this resonates with and women out there send this to your loved ones. Every single man that this resonates with, it is your responsibility to be a better husband. It is your responsibility to be a better boyfriend. It is your responsibility to be a better father. No one around you is changing your reality. It's you. It's you. It's always been you. If you want to connect deeper with your partners, if you want to connect deeper with your children, you have to come back to your heart. How do you do that? Get out of your head. When we are in our heads, we lose who we are. When we are in our heads, we are in a masculine state. When we are in our bodies, we are back in that feminine balance and you have to find balance. If you're 100% in your head, you got to find 50% head, 50% body. Come to your heart. Close your eyes. Sit down where you are. I don't care if you're in your billion dollar high chair office in your 600, 800 square foot office and you have 10 assistants. I don't care. Close your eyes and come to your body. You're going to find a lot of difficulty because it's going to be the first time in a while. And your ego knows that you're confronting a lot of pain inside there. You, my friend, are holding a lot of anger. You, my friend, are holding a lot of sadness. When was the last time you, Mr. Wounded High Achieving Male, cried? When was the last time you, Mr. High Achieving Male, really let out that anger fully, that rage that you have for your parents for not loving you for who you are? Close your eyes, put your hand on your heart, and I want you to feel what it feels like to breathe into your heart. What does it feel like to breathe under your hand? What does it feel like to get out of your head for the first time in so long and to finally come into your body? and to finally come more importantly to your heart. What you're doing by coming to your heart is finally creating that balance that you've been seeking for so long. Everything you've been seeking has been right there with you. Come back to your heart and notice how it feels to be in your heart. And then can you allow, can you allow just that feeling or discomfort that you're running away from by work, by achieving, by status? Can you allow that pain that is there to finally start moving. Because ultimately, when you allow yourself to confront that sadness that you have for not being accepted for who you were as a young boy, and that anger that you have for not being accepted, when you confront those emotions and you allow yourself to feel them, guess what? You've actually opened up capacity to feel that for your loved ones. Now you're able to hold your girlfriend, your wife, your partner so much more in their emotion. Now you've created a deeper bond with your lover. Now you're able to hold your children when they're expressing emotion and not run away from it by going into work. You're able to hold your children when they're expressing and now they're comfortable to be themselves with you. And now they're gonna see that they're lovable, that they're able to be loved and held by their parents, the opposite of what your parents may have done with you. You are breaking that generational trauma by accepting your children and all of their emotion. This is what it means to be a man. Not to make a billion dollars, not to make a million dollars, not to get the next accolade, the next award. It doesn't mean anything. What it means to be a man is not only provide for your family, not only protect your family, but to connect with your family, to have your family know that you as a man can hold all of their emotions and you've given permission by you being you to hold your whole family and your kids will always know that they can come to dad and show every emotion in the highest amount of intensity and you are as solid as a rock. This is your duty as a man, not to make another million, not to make another billion. Stop showing out. Stop running from that wounded place. Come back to your heart and be the man that you're here to be. There you go. That's what it is. I needed to talk about this. I really hope that resonated. Share it with your loved one if you haven't yet. Copy and paste it. Send it to dad. Send it to your uncle. Send it to your brother. Send it to your brother-in-law. I don't care. Whoever needs it. Because it's time for men to start stepping up and show out. To show up for the people that they love truly in their highest essence. And this is what we're going to do. This is the new level of man that's coming. And we're starting it now. 